Greetings, my name is William White and I am the Music Director of Harmonia Orchestra and Chorus, here to introduce our 2024-25 season called Pinnacles. We are ascending the heights of classical music this season, and uh, here I am at my sort of control center surrounded by scores, scores of scores you might say, to talk about the works uh, on the season. We start off the season with a concert called Salvation. Now this is a three B's sort of a program, but with an odd kind of slant on that. The first piece is by a composer named, Polish composer named Gradzina Batsevich. This is her overture for orchestra, a piece that comes from 1943. And uh, when we talk about salvation and music as salvation, you know, she had been a, uh, a major performer and composer before the war, and during the war she had to hunker down in Poland and, and limit her activities to writing compositions that she didn't even know if they were going to be performed. But the act of writing them was her salvation. Then we come to a piece by the American composer Samuel Barber, his Prayers of Kierkegaard. Now, one of the things that we like to uh, pride ourselves on in Harmonia is presenting forgotten gems, rare gems, pieces by major composers that you might not get to hear otherwise. And this certainly falls into that category. Uh, this is a choral orchestral work, has a beautiful soprano solo, and it's a, it's a very philosophical piece, as you might imagine, with the text by uh, the Danish philosopher Zoran Kierkegaard. Um, it's just a, a piece that really ought to be played more often, be performed more often, and that's why we're going to do it. Now the third B on this program, Bela Bartok, his Concerto for Orchestra. This has got to be one of the most important, one of the greatest, one of the most delightful pieces to listen to of the 20th century, of the let's call it symphonic repertoire. But of course, a concerto for orchestra is a special kind of a symphonic piece. It's a piece that compels all of the musicians in the orchestra to ascend their own musical heights in performance. If everybody gets a feature, everybody gets a, um, a you know, dastardly passages of music to have to tackle with. Uh, it's a great way to open our season. So that is Bartok's Concerto for Orchestra. Next up, we've got a concert called Majesty. And this one opens with, oh, good old George Frederick Handel in his English, most English of English modes, Zadok the Priest, the piece that has been performed at the anointing of every British monarch since 1707 when it was first written. Um, this is a piece that is just beloved the world over, and it really does communicate the majesty and glory of a moment like a coronation. Now then, we go on to another view of Handel from his early period, early Handel from his Italian period, the Dixit Dominus. This is a piece where I think you get to hear Handel at his most groovy, at his funkiest, uh, just indulging in rhythm and sparkle and the orchestral accompaniment is really just strings with a few um, extra basso continuo instruments. But the chorus gets to shine in this piece. There are great solos for some of our choral singers and um, this is just a really fun one. Again, a piece that as far as Handel oratorio repertoire goes uh, doesn't get performed all that terribly much so we're glad to be presenting it for you now. Now the final piece on the Majesty program. A bit of the old Ludwig von Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. Of all the Beethoven symphonies, uh, I mean, look, we, we can think about the Beethoven symphonies going from tragedy to triumph in the fifth and the ninth. We can think about the, um, the kind of funny symphonies, maybe the second and the fourth and the, uh, and, and the eighth. But I think that um, the symphony that Beethoven wrote that's most exciting and just most kind of a thrill ride from beginning to end is the seventh symphony. It was called the Apotheosis of the Dance. And the kind of dancey grooves that he got from Handel are well in evidence in this seventh symphony. Next, we move on to our annual performances of Handel's Messiah. This piece never gets old. We do it every year in two performances, one at uh, First Free Methodist Church, which is a beloved tradition. And now, you know, we've really been developing this new tradition of our second performance in Kenmore's Bastyr Chapel, which um, 
when you just look at the interiors and you talk about the uh, the splendor of the environment and how it's sort of a reflection of the amazing musical uh, content of this piece. Well, I love both performances, um, but uh, you can't go wrong. Let's just put it that way. After the new year, we've got our orchestra's annual solo outing with a program called Innocence. Now, this starts off with two pieces that are based on magical horns. First, Weber's Overture to Oberon, which is all about these little fairies and horns and, you know, just sort of dancing around. And then we've got uh, a performance, a very special performance, of selections from Mahler's Des Knaben Wunderhorn, the Youth's Magic Horn, performed by Catherine Goforth, this incredible tenor soloist coming up from Portland. Uh, we worked with her last season. She did a remarkable kind of last minute save of, uh, of Haydn's The Seasons. And ever since then, I've just been dying to get her back. So uh, she is going to perform these amazing Mahler songs. Many of the tunes uh, from these songs, of course, ended up in Mahler's first four symphonies, which are generally known as the Wunderhorn symphonies. So um, this is a chance to hear Mahler in, in a slightly different aspect if you're used to just hearing his symphonies, you know, to hear his songs. Now, on the second half of this program, we've got this behemoth. Oof. Dmitry Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony, which I think has to be considered the quintessential 20th century symphony. Um, you know, we call this program Innocence, and in a way it's obvious on the first half how you've got this innocence of these childlike pieces. But Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony is in a way his protest of his own innocence. Uh, Shostakovich, of course, always under the thumb of the Soviet regime and of Stalin's oppressive eye in particular. Uh, Stalin had taken offense to his opera, Lady Macbeth of the Mitsyensk District. And because of that, Shostakovich's career was really waylaid, it was derailed. And he had to get back in good with the Soviet apparatchiks. And uh, it was with this symphony that he did it. But there's so much ambiguity about what is the real meaning of this symphony. Was this really just him kowtowing to the powers that be? Or was it in some way a protest? And we'll never know. And both readings are possible. So I just think that this is an amazing piece because of the, um, the intense uh, thought that can go into it while you're just listening to it and enjoying a, a very powerful piece of music. You can always wonder what exactly was going on in Shostakovich's mind. Next, we come to our choral program of the year, and this one is called Invention. Now, this is a fun one because we're starting and ending with Bach. We're starting with uh, a, an arrangement of one of his inventions by the Swingle Singers. And uh, in the middle, we are going to explore different ideas of invention. So um, invention, music inspired by an inventor, for example. We've got two pieces of American music inspired by Italians. We've got a piece by Morton Lauridsen, local luminary, and then uh, Eric Whitaker's Leonardo Dreams of His Flying Machine. So talking about music that's inspired by an inventor. Uh, then we'll look at the invention of American music itself with a, a little trio of pieces, um, one by R. Nathaniel Dett, whose music we featured very prominently last season, and one by uh, Marcus L.A. Garrett, the conductor who we had in to conduct Dett's music last season. Then we will uh, look at the invention of two new pieces of music, uh, both by members of Harmonia. We've got a new piece by Aaron Keat, a member of our tenor section, and then a piece by Sheila Bristow, our brilliant choral accompanist and orchestral keyboardist, whose music we have featured quite a bit in recent years. And that concert will end with one movement of the piece that is going to be the main feature, the one work, on our following concert. Oh yes, it's a movement of Johann Sebastian Bach's Mass in B minor. Now, what can one say about the B minor Mass? It is, when you talk about a season where we're looking at pinnacles of the repertoire, the pinnacles don't come much higher than the B minor Mass. This is really the summation of Bach's art as a musician. Uh, it, is a mu it is a piece where he collected all of his 
most important ideas and musical impulses into one extended work, a setting of the Roman Catholic Mass, even though he was, of course, a the, the devoutest of devout Lutherans. This piece has everything in it, such glorious choral writing, incredible solos, um, brilliant orchestration, and um, as a conductor, I have to say, this is, of, of all the, the great Bach masterpieces, this is the one that calls to me most. And so I couldn't be more excited that we are going to give uh, just what I know is going to be a fabulous performance of Bach's B minor Mass. The final concert of the main stage season is one called Spring Rites. Now, this concert is going to get off to a start with the overture to Bellini's Norma. This is a piece, an overture that basically, to, to a person, to an organization, nobody ever performs or programs. Now, why have I put it on the, uh, on the program? Well, for one thing, it's just a, a really fun, delightful concert opening piece of music. But for another thing, the subject of Norma, the opera, is druids. And that's become a, a little bit of a theme in this concert, because the main work is Felix Mendelssohn's Die Erste Walpurgisnacht. Now, what is Die Erste Walpurgisnacht? This piece that probably uh, nobody has ever heard of before. This is a very fun oratorio. The music, I have to say, is sort of like, um, it's, it's the kind of Mendelssohn that inspired uh, Arthur Sullivan of Gilbert and Sullivan fame to, to write his you know, very fun scores. The story of the piece is just a humdinger. It's about a group of Druid priests who want to do their annual May Day celebration, their incantations and rituals on the top of a mountain. But the area is beset by Christian monks, and the monks want to stop the pagans from doing their rituals. But on the night, um, their rituals give them uh, the power of invisibility, and so they can go around spooking all of the Christian monks and scaring them away. So this is the one 19th century oratorio where Christians are pitted against pagans, and the pagans actually win. How much fun is that? Now, uh, as the centerpiece of this program, we ha are going to have a performance of Robert Schumann's Cello Concerto with a really brilliant young musician making her Harmonia debut, uh, Carson Ling Effiard, and she is a, a student currently at the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia, of course, the nation's top school of music. And um, she's a Seattle native. I've worked with her before. She is just uh, a really excellent young soloist. Um, so a lot to be uh, excited about there. And of course, a piece that I think uh, dovetails very nicely into the works of Bellini and Mendelssohn. They're all coming from that mid-19th century, uh, the kind of golden age of romanticism. So um, that's the season, pinnacles. Every concert has something special, something that's going to show off our forces, let them just come alive in all of their musicality, and I really hope that you'll be there to enjoy it with us. Subscriptions are on sale today. Please get your subscription now, and we look forward to seeing you this season. Thanks a lot.